Welcome back to Stealth Security. Today, we are going to look at the Crocodile Box from Hack the Box. If you are new here, this video is part of the playlist of EC Boxes from Hack the Box. So, we use real world tools to hack into these boxes, and uh, these boxes are provided by the Hack the Box platform. And we answer questions and we finally capture a flag. So, let's go. I've started the Pawn Box and I've also started the Target Server. So, let me copy the IP address. And as usual, we'll start with the ping command to make sure that we are connected to the target. Yes, we are. Great. So let's start with an nmap scan. Let me sudo into root first. Let's start with an nmap scan. I want to see service versions. I want to enable scripts and some verbosity. And to speed up my scans, I'm going to say T5 and the IP address. And let's go. We can see that there are already two ports discovered, port 80, which means there is a web server running, and then port 21, which is FTP. Okay, let's see what the map comes up with. Okay, we have a lot of information. Port 21 is open, it's FTP. Okay. Anonymous FTP login allowed, which is interesting, which means that we can log into the FTP without a username and a password. And also, I just discovered a couple of files using the anonymous login, which is allowed user list and allowed user list start password. That's great. So it looks like there are some credentials lying around, which we can try and use to log into uh, better access levels for FTP or even try and log into the web server. Let's see what we can find. Okay, port 80 is open. It's Apache HTTPD, which means that it's highly likely that it's running PHP. Okay, there is a bootstrap business template. So you understand the importance of recon. We have so much information that we can work with. Okay, so let's start with FTP since anonymous login is allowed. I'm just going to say FTP and the IP address. Okay, it's asking for a name. Let me give it empty. Login failed. Okay, let's try GAR. Okay, this didn't work. I think it's FTP. Okay, login is successful. Just made a mistake in the syntax. I just have to append the FTP before. Okay, great. Let's do ls. There we go. That is the allowed dot user listing, allowed user list or password. Let me copy it to my local machine. So the command is get allowed dot user list. Okay, it should be downloaded. Now get allowed the user list dot password. Okay, that's complete as well. Let me exit from FTP and make sure that uh, I have these files on my local machine. Yep, there we go. That's the allowed user list and allowed user list on password. Let me quickly check what they have about user list. Okay, there are some users. This is great information if we have some kind of uh, information regarding what the users are of a system. So if we can find credentials like this lying around, it makes our job really easier. So we can do other kinds of attacks like brute force or uh, try different approaches to try and break into the system. Okay, let me check the password as well. Okay, let's try if we can use any of these credentials to try and log in into FTP with a higher privilege access. So FTP. Say root at the IP address. Let's see if it's allowed. Okay, this FTP server is anonymous only. So no other login is allowed to FTP. Okay, we found one more port open, which is 80. And uh, there is a web server on it. We can go and check it out. Before that, let's quickly go to the question. What nmap scanning switch employs the use of default scripts? It's SC. We have done this many times. What service? version is found to be running on port 21. I had a feeling this would be one of the questions. So it's asking for the FTP version. It's VSFTPD 3.0.3. FTPD 3.0.3. Okay, what FTP code is returned for us? The anonymous FTP login allowed message. Okay. FTP code is 230. 
After connecting to the FTP server, what username do we provide when prompted to log in anonymously? Oh, we have not provided a username, so let's say anonymous. Okay. After connecting to the FTP server, what command can we use to download the files it's get? What is one of the higher privilege sounding names, sounding usernames, and allowed user list? It's, let's see, it's admin. What version of Apache HTTP server is running on the target host? Let's see if Nmap has found that. Yeah, it's Apache HTTP D 2.4.41. Okay. What switch can we use for GoBuster to specify? We are looking for specific file types. Okay. GoBuster is a tool that we use to enumerate and find if there are any exposed directories or web pages uh, in a web server. For example, if there is a web server and uh, we have to figure out the admin page, uh, we can use GoBuster. So, GoBuster, let's look at the help command. If you have been watching our playlist, you know that uh, we use GoBuster very often. So, GoBuster. So there is DIR to find dark piece of files, DNS to find subdomains. Here we are going to look for directories, which is DIR. Okay, what switch can we use to specify? We're looking for specific file types. Specific file types, meaning since this is an Apache server, it's highly likely that we have PHP. So this lab is expecting us to use uh, a filter uh, to look just for PHP files. So let's quickly look at the help command for the DIR. With GoBuster, GoBuster, DIR. Oh. Okay, usually we use a URL and a word list. If you don't know what a word list is, it's just a list of words. So we give GoBuster a list of names and GoBuster will automatically create URLs and uh, go and ping it and check if it exists. Okay, how do we use an extension? Should be hyphen X. Uh, let's double check. It's hyphen X for extensions. Okay, let's do a GoBuster scan. Firstly, we need a word list. So I'm going to go find my word list under user share word lists. That should be suggest. Okay, let me see the do it. User share word lists. Okay, we have Seclis. Seclis is a collection of a lot of word lists that we can use. So let me go into Seclis. And I'm looking for discovery. Okay, web content. Okay, there should be a simpler word list. I can go and find that. You don't have to use Seclis for this. So user share word lists okay there is dir buster okay we can use one of these to start with we can use the directoryless 2.3 small dot text okay let me copy this so the command is go buster dir hyphen new it's http the ip address and now the word list i'm inside this directory that's why i'm just simply giving this name if you are doing this from maybe the home directory you just have to give it the full path okay so that will be user share word list dir buster slash this name so my word list is okay and my extension is going to be php Okay, GoBuster started. Great, you can see it is already found login.php. Let's first open the web browser. We haven't checked out the site yet. Let me cough the IP address for more time. Okay, this is a pretty standard website. Right, we have found there is a file called login.php. Okay, it's asking for a username and password. So this is where we can try and use the username and password list that we discovered and see if we can use that to log in. We will start with admin. 
because uh, that's the name that has the highest privileges. So I'm assuming it should be news here, admin. And for the password, let's just have this running in the background. You can see that there are like a lot of combinations that uh, GoBuster has to go through. There's also found some more. There is a dashboard, which looks like a 301 redirect. There is config.php. These are all interesting files for us to get more information about this seller. Okay, so let me go into home and uh, I need the password list. Let's check where admin was. Admin was the fourth one, so it's highly likely this is the password combination. There we go. We are in. So this is usually how uh, real-world pen testing works as well. So if you have open ports and uh, there are services, you try and gather as much as information as you can. And then when you actually go into a web server where there are like more exposed components, you can make use of that information and try and gain access. So the flag is also displayed here. Let's go and finish off the questions. Which switch for specific file types is iPhone X? Which PHP file can we identify with the directly brute force if it was login.php? And finally, our flag is submitted. Okay, crocodile box has been pawned. So I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, you're able to understand uh, how this box works, how we usually scan servers, how we find open ports and uh, gather information and use that information to get uh, privileged access to services, in this case, a web seller. If you want some strong foundations to offensive cybersecurity, do check out our security starter course. It's a five-day program. It's combined with uh, video tutorials as well as labs to give you some strong foundations to work with offensive cybersecurity. So it costs around $30. It has a 30-day refund. So go and check it out. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have questions, let me know in the comments. I'll see you soon with a new topic. Cheers.